Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's Introduction to Wireless Networking. Today we're going to be talking about wireless network standards, and then we're going to move on to encryption for wireless networking. There's a whole bunch of technical information to cover, so let's go ahead and begin. And we're going to begin by talking about some wireless network standards. Now, wireless networking standards are established by the 802.11 Committee of the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, the IEEE. Quite often, we use the term Wi-Fi to describe an 802.11 network. Now, this is technically incorrect. Wi-Fi is actually a reference to the Wi-Fi Alliance. The Wi-Fi Alliance is the organization that's responsible for certifying that wireless networking equipment actually meets the 802.11 standards. Wi-Fi has become synonymous with the wireless local area network in the English language. So if you hear Wi-Fi, no big deal. Just remember that it is a reference to the Wi-Fi Alliance, not necessarily to the 802.11 standard. So let's talk about the 802.11 base standards. First off, it describes a method of half duplex networking by using a portion of the radio frequency spectrum, the RF spectrum. Half duplex describes a method of network communication in which a device can send or receive information, but it cannot do both at the same time. If it could, that would be full duplex networking and that wouldn't work in this situation. The most common RF bands used are the 2.4 gigahertz ISM band and the 5 gigahertz UNII band. So why do we use these two specific bands? Well, that's because in the United States they can be utilized without a license from the FCC. If you try and use any other bands, you need to get a license from the FCC and that gets a little bit cumbersome. So now let's move into more detail on the 802.11 standards. If you need to pause, that's okay. I'll understand. First up is 802.11b. It was introduced in 1999, and it utilizes the 2.4 gigahertz band. It offers up to 11 megabits per second networking with a maximum indoor range of 115 feet and a maximum outdoor range of 460 feet. Then there was 802.11a, and it was also introduced in 1999, but it actually was introduced after 11b. Now, it utilizes the 5 gigahertz band and offers up to 54 megabits per second of networking with a maximum indoor range of 115 feet and a maximum outdoor range of 390 feet. Then there was 802.11g. It was introduced in 2003. It utilizes the 2.4 gigahertz band and offers up to 54 megabits per second networking with a maximum indoor range of 125 feet and a maximum outdoor range of 460 feet. As wireless became more popular, we needed to come up with some techniques to increase the speed. So along came 802.11n. It was introduced in 2009 and it can utilize both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz bands. It does this by using multiple input and multiple output technology, MIMO technology. With MIMO, we use multiple antennas and multiple radio transmitters to increase throughput. Now, it offers up to 600 megabits per second networking with a maximum indoor range of 230 feet and a maximum outdoor range of 820 feet. Well, 600 megabits per second was not enough. So along comes 802.11ac. Now this was approved in January 2014, and it only utilizes the 5 gigahertz band. It is expected to offer up to 1 gigabit per second networking with a maximum indoor range of 115 feet. And they haven't set the maximum outdoor range yet. There are some other standards that are coming along they just haven't been approved yet. Now let's move on to encryption for wireless networking. 
Why do we need encryption for our wireless networks? Well, because they transmit over the air. Anybody can intercept the signal. So for security, we should encrypt our wireless networks. So that brings us to the encryption standards for the 802.11 network. First up is WEP, Wired Equivalent Privacy. Now it was introduced in 1999. It works by using a key and the RC4 algorithm. Now the key and the RC4 algorithm encrypt the signal. WEP was fully broken in 2001, and if you're going to secure your network, it should not be used. WEP was replaced by WPA, Wi-Fi Protected Access. Now this was introduced in 2003 as a stopgap measure. It was never intended to have a long life. But WPA was designed to be backwards compatible with equipment that could use WEP. It used the same RC4 algorithm as WEP, but it also introduced TKIP, Temporal Key Integrity Protocol, in an effort to increase security. And as I said, it was backwards compatible, so it could be used by pre-2003 access points. TKIP ensures that each packet has a unique encryption key, but WPA is still easily broken and should not be used in a network. Its replacement was WPA2, Wi-Fi Protected Access 2, which was introduced in 2004. It's much more robust than earlier standards, and it introduced AES, Advanced Encryption Standard, into the process. AES is a symmetrical encryption standard, which means that both ends of the channel use the same key to decode the transmission. AES is very hard to break. AES is the current standard and has been accepted worldwide as an encryption standard. Now, because wireless network traffic is broadcast over an unlicensed band, wireless networks tend to be less secure than wired networks. Always make sure when you're setting up a wireless network that you use the proper encryption standards. Never leave your wireless network unsecured. Also, when you're using a public wireless network, be sure to use care and caution. You can never be positive just how secure it is. So I would recommend never sending sensitive information over a public wireless network. Now that concludes this session on the introduction to wireless networking. We talked about wireless networking standards, and then we moved on to encryption for wireless networks. Now, on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'll do another one soon.